understanding what exactly you're up against is really important. Um, when it comes to the two-spot spider mite, identification is, is key, but we need to understand the life cycle before we can identify. So first with the two-spot spider mite, of course, there's the egg. Now that egg is a perfect circle uh, in comparison to maybe a persimilis egg, which would be more of a kind of like a chicken egg shape. It's that more oval shape. Also, the persimilis egg is much larger. So I don't recommend identifying based off of the eggs. There's not as many, you know, key characteristics. And, and that's same with those larval stages and the proto-nymph and the deuteronymphs. Those are stages of two-spot spider mite. Um, ideally, if you can find the adults, that's where you have the most pronounced characteristics for identification. So if you can find those adults, what you're looking for is those two spots, you know, the two spots by the mite. And we, we, we tell people, try to find the adults because those spots are actually accumulation of the body waste. And so in those earlier stages, it may not be as clear whether it's there or not. So looking for those two spots is really important. The earliest warning sign uh, is knowing your crop, right? There, there are some crops where we just, we just know spider mites are going to be there. Um, and we need to check those, maybe or scout those more frequently. But for example, salvia, uh, palms, calathea, um, chrysanthemums, right? Uh, Vineland Research put out uh, a study uh, in 2017, I believe 2018, where they sampled um, chrysanthemum cuttings and 48% of what they sampled had two spot spider mites on there. So, you know, knowing your crop is, is the first sign and whether it does or does not often get spider mites. It's never 100%, but um, two spot spider mites have their preferred hosts and secondary hosts. Looking at your host is one. Um, the second thing to take into consideration is your environment, right? Everybody does know uh, hot and dry. Spider mites love it. They love it hot and dry. And scouting is so important. What I tell growers is to start at the bottom where the spider mites typically do. It's those lowest leaves. It's those oldest leaves. Start flipping them over. Look for the eggs. You know, look for the adults. And I know that they're small. They're not easy to see. But you know, start at those oldest leaves. And if you see the damage, which is that stippling, um, that's when you want to pick some of those leaves off and put it under you know, a microscope or a hand lens. Um, in working your way through the plant. Across the board is, is labor. Um, the struggling with labor, which, you know, actually ties into IPM really well. So when we have two spot spider mite um, on crops, we need to be able to scout for these uh, problems. And we need to be able to apply predatory mites or preventive controls and, and not having uh, labor or not putting enough emphasis on scouting means that we're kind of going back to that shotgun approach. And what's funny to see is a transition of growers that have moved less from the, the um, traditional old school chemistries and more into the biocontrol, but they still like that shotgun approach uh, of using multiple predators, whether they know something is there or not. And, and that, can, that can be a useful strategy, but to, to focus on um, the scouting really helps with um, really helping your labor situation down the road. And you are able to collect good data, which means, you know, every time you grow this crop, you're starting to see spider mites. Let's put a preventative plan in place instead of, you know, putting that shotgun approach out there and just, just kind of waiting to see what happens. Scouting is an investment up front, but down the line, you're really able to key into that data, which saves you a, a healthy amount of time. Spider mite management and, and pest management overall, we need to take a look at IPM and, and the different practices. And so I think IPM um, covers a wide range, but cultural practices are really important. Um, you know, weed management within and outside the greenhouse, um, you know, making sure that these spider mites don't have overwintering sites is really important. Um, I know everyone loves a pet plant. The owners of these greenhouses love their pet plants. Uh, it's not fun to say, hey, we should really not have this pet plant in here, boss. But uh, those pet plants are overwintering sites and, and can cause a, a huge uh, trouble down the road. Uh, so cultural practices, sanitation is so important. But, you know, of course, biologicals, um, 
is really, really important on making sure that we stay in this preventative pressure and making sure we're managing thresholds. We're really excited to, to talk about Percy Plus, uh, which is a new persimilis formulation. Um, in the past, uh, persimilis has been reared traditionally in a, in a very similar way, um, but the R&D team has just done an absolutely wonderful job at BioB and found a, a way to rear persimilis on a non-pest mite. Uh, which allows us to have a couple advantages. One, every persimilis bottle that we have has multiple life stages. So um, you get your egg, you get your immature, and you get your adults, which gives you a longer duration of prevention and control, having that in the bottle. Also, something that we, you know, no one's really been able to do is send persimilis with supplemental food, right? Because nobody wants spider mite in the bottle going to their greenhouse. Um, but since we found a non-pest uh, prey mite, a non-pest mite for the persimilis to feed on, we're able to you know, send you persimilis that uh, is healthy, not hungry. Um, and you know, we tried to send in, in really everybody in the industry, whether it's Swarovski, Kakumaris, Andersoni, there's typically a prey mite in there for them to snack on during transportation so that when they get into that greenhouse, they're as healthy as possible. And so our persimilis now has that, which is new. We have persimilis in a slow-release sachet. That's, that's something that's so exciting. I never thought that this was going to be possible. Before you ask, there's not spider mites in there. It is a, it is a non-pest uh, non food. Uh, so the persimilis are able to, um, kind of like a regular sachet, uh, feed on uh, this food inside the sachet and slowly release over time, which has never been an option before. So we're excited to uh, have the Priscilla sachets. We have the speed and then the classic, which is basically your fast release and your slow release. Um, and, and growers have been really excited to try these out.